Dear Mother, I found out who was taking the coal. Vix and I settled down to watch, and we got a chance to really talk for the first time. He told me about where his costumes came from. It was actually quite a nice conversation. If I can convince him to trust me further, he could become quite a useful resource. The coal thieves turned out to be some kind of large bipedal frogs. Five of them came onto the ship. We dispatched three of them and took two of them as prisoners. We locked them in the hold for the night, with Franklin guarding them. This morning, we interrogated them. They were not able to speak common, so we'd made a roundabout method of communication. Franklin talked to a frog, who talked to the prisoners. The frog then relayed their answers to Franklin, who relayed them to us. We learned the frog creatures work for an entity named Miss May. We weren't able to find out what type of creature she is, but she requires the frogs to gather her coal. They claim that their people are enslaved by her. They even agreed to take us to her if we helped them free their people. We'll follow them and see where this leads us. Watch well. Raz. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Delve and Dash. This is episode five. My name is Michael, your most humble and merciful dungeon master for the evening. Welcome to Proficiency Bonus, everybody. And don't forget to check out our primary sponsor, Dice Bard. You can check them out at dicebard.com or type in exclamation point Dice Bard in the chat for a link to their website where you can get some awesome dice. And don't forget to use the promo code PROBO in the checkout. It's a coupon code that gets you free expedited shipping on your order. So welcome back, guys. And we're going to dive right in after that awesome recap from our own adventurer, Raz. Um, so last time, adventurers, you guys now have these two frog-like humanoid creatures that have agreed through interpret <laughs> through <laughs> Franklin's... Uh, translation through jibby the frog um you guys were able to determine that these frogs claim that they are being kind of enslaved by this entity miss may and have agreed to lead you um to her if you would help to free their free their kind and that's where we pick up what would you like to do adventurers Follow the frog people. <laughs> Follow the frog people? <laughs> okay. You got it. Um, question, are you rearming the frog people, or are they going unarmed? <clears throat> I would say unarmed. Okay. Just that would depend. What us. kind of read does Franklin get on them? If you were to, like, insight or something. Go ahead. I yeah, you can make an insight check. Sure. Anybody who wants an insight check, if you guys want to, you can. I'm freaking out. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> oh, I got a natural one, so I don't get anything. <laughs> yeah, you think the croaking is getting rather annoying. <laughs> yeah. You're natural one, I got a natural 20. Nice. Uh, nice. Uh, you got a pretty honest read from them, Franklin. You don't feel as if they are trying to be manipulative or aggressive towards you anymore. Actually, they are more so fearful of you than anything else. And they've got the lumps and bumps to prove it. Then uh, Franklin has no problem giving them their weapons back. Okay. I also think we should give weapons back. They could help us. Okay, they... Uh, uh, a little hesitant to get near Franklin as they take their spears from him um, and back away quickly uh, <laughs> just to make sure that they're out of range of his staff that they <laughs> were knocked out with last time. Um, just wait until I wolf out or spider out. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that'll be something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll be intimidating. <laughs> So you guys are going to allow these frog creatures to go ahead and lead you off the ship and towards the location that they came from. I think you're still muted, Dalton. You got it? Oh. Is Dalton talking to someone else or is he... 
don't hear him. I don't hear him. I see his mouth moving, but I don't hear him. Yeah. If you're <laughs> talking to us, thumbs up. <laughs> no. no. For some reason, we lost you, uh, Dalton. You might not be able to hear us as well. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> This episode brought to you by Dice Bard. <laughs> what do they do? <laughs> what do they yeah, do? They they us. make some really cool dice. Really? Yes. How expensive? They're not expensive at all. Like oh, there's really? a ton of sets of dice online that are on sale right now. Oh, wow. And if what you, about shipping? How's the shipping? Shipping. Well, you know what? It is totally free if you use the coupon code PROBO at checkout. No way. I'm going to go do that right now. I think Does you should. Does that even account for international shipping? Everywhere on the planet. Whoa. Even to Australia. What? Even to Australia. Oh my God. There's like only one person I know that would... <laughs> <laughs> that would even apply to. <laughs> Woo! Uh, we're just trying to get uh, Dalton's headset fixed. For some reason, he just disappeared out of. Uh... Okay. There it is. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you guys now. Awesome. Yeah. All of a sudden, you just disappeared on us. Yeah, I couldn't hear any of you. <laughs> all right. So you guys are going to go ahead and lead. Or allow the frogs to lead you. And they actually head down the kind of gangplank down uh, to the a, a crude trail that leads off to the west where you guys have been um, hearing some strange voices in your head coming from that direction. A little bit of time passes as you're traveling. You notice that the frog-like creatures are staying a little bit ahead of you. They've got their spears in their hand, kind of looking back and forth, watching... Uh, keeping a good lookout. Surprisingly, these creatures are rather stealthy. They, uh, they're they light on their feet. They don't make too much noise, and they seem like they always know where to step um, as they're moving through. It seems like they've traveled this trail uh, a lot. And you, um, all as you're moving along... Vix, you start to hear those sounds in your head again. Oh, no. Those draconic voices. It sounds like several of them at once, and it's hard to make out all the words. But you hear the turn, the words loud and clear. Lead, hero. Well, you obviously aren't talking to me, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just gonna turn around and go this way, and I just start walking the opposite direction. <laughs> the, 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 what was our marching order? <clears throat> I guess the frogs would be in front. Who would be close, fl closely following the frogs? That's a good question. Probably me. Okay, so we got Franklin keeping them in line, keeping them in line, <laughs> making sure they're doing what they need to do. That's right. Um, I'd probably be behind him. Okay. So, and I think I would have been at the back. Okay, so yeah, Vix, are you turning around trying to walk past yeah. Raz? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to grab you. <laughs> no, 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 please. Just what? let me go. What's going on? They're back. What's back? The voices, they're back. Oh, the, vo the voice that you and, you and Silver heard. They want me to leave. Oh. I mean, you're not going to get any rest from it if we don't figure out where it's coming from. I don't lead, I follow. It's my old name. Well, then, right now, follow us and we'll keep you safe. But they're yelling at me. <laughs> Vix, do you trust me? <laughs> Is it your head telling you to lead? Not at the moment. <laughs> There's a lot of stress. I'm really stressed out. There's so much happening and we're following frogs. Vix, if you trust me, believe me when I say I won't let anything happen to you. 
It's gonna be okay. Just we if just it have makes to see you where feel this leads. Better, you could just ride on my shoulders. That would make me feel worse, probably, because then I'm so higher towards the sky. Would it make you feel better if you held my hand? I don't know, maybe. Would you like to try that? Sure. Okay. And I reach down my hand. <laughs> uh, Raz and Vix, go ahead and take a point of DM's inspiration. It's <laughs> 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 amazing. <laughs> um, Silver, mm -hmm. you start to hear the same things. But your words are slightly different that stand out in your head. You can make out the words Come Find Caution Leading more now that you guys are more west, leading a little bit more towards the north now. But these voices are getting very loud in your head. Franklin, you also begin to hear, because you understand Draconic as well, do you? Yes, yes I do. You start to hear these whispered, overlapping whispered voices in your mind as well. And you hear some words that stand out for you. Guard. Protect. Discover. And then a bunch of whispers, almost kind of like white noise, overlapping voices, high pitches, low pitches, all kinds of different sounds of voices, like a chorus of draconic, hissy-type noises as it, they overlap each other in your mind. All three of you, almost simultaneously, continue to hear these in your mind. Raz, though, fine, is... Fine. <laughs> Raz, I can't take it anymore. Your Vix is freaking out. Raz, you're not hearing a thing other than little frogs chirping. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out that Silver and Vix aren't crazy. I'm also hearing the voices. Where do I have to Vix, take them? I told you. Please, just stop. Just tell me where to go. Just stop it. Vix, as oh, you ask, here. as Vix asked that question, you. It's strange. After immediately after asking that question, it's almost like you know where to go. It's leading you north, but it's not very far away. Everybody follow me. <laughs> I just start walking you? north. Hold on, I think we should finish what we're doing first, and then we can go check this out. They're not gonna stop! I actually agree with Fix on this one. I'm worried that you guys won't be in your right mind. If we don't I will care. take my quarterstaff and tap the frog people on the back. No, the one turns around and looks at you really, like with fear in its eyes like as you tapped them with the corners snap, two hands on the spear going <laughs> I'm gonna wave my hand like just saying follow us and then we'll follow Vix they look at each other kind of confused and then look back at you and go <laughs> and they shake their heads as almost they, they understand what's going on with your hand gestures <laughs> and then they hesitantly start to follow you as I guess Vix is taking the lead yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm behind him All right. I'm like gripping my quarter staff really tight the little I'm still, candles lit I'm still next to him <laughs> okay um, you make your way through some thickets through some light foliage it gets a little bit more dense as you're approaching and these voices continue to get louder in your mind lead that's what I'm doing Hero. Stop calling me a hero. <laughs> Eventually, you get to a spot that looks like some loggers have been working. There's a few trees down, but they look like clean cuts. And you see an area where it looks like a large tree has come down, 
and has landed in what looks what looked to be a little pile of stones. But as the tree landed, the pile of stones kind of opened up, and it seems like there's a large pit that just disappears into the ground at the base of where this tree is lying on the ground. And this is definitely where I think I'm supposed to go. It, the, the voices almost echo out of the pit as you're getting closer. The, the voice told me, uh, said caution, so I think we should make sure we... I'm your leader right first. now! And I know where I'm going! Alright. Lead the way then. <clears throat> All right. I, I, I angrily. I just want the voices gone. I'm getting really <laughs> annoyed. I just keep getting louder. I want them gone. I'm oh. Charging into the pit. All right, you get to the edge of the pit. It looks like it's about a five foot wide opening that's been kind of smashed open from when this tree fell. As you look down, it looks it drops into darkness, but it almost looks like there is some type of stone floor about. 20 feet down there are some vines and things that hang off the side of the pit and some dripping water as you watch kind of the dripping water just flows down and you can hear it hitting the bottom of the pit um, it looks like the pit is much larger down inside but it's very dark the only light that's there is the light that's actually coming through from inside the pit if you'd like vix you can make a perception check for me or an investigation check your choice Sure. How does DM's inspiration work? You can roll both dice and take the higher. It's like have an advantage on your roll. Oh, okay. I'll <laughs> use that. All right, you got it. <laughs> All right, it's a uh, seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, as you start to look down the pit, you do notice that on the edges of where the light is, do, do kobolds have dark vision? Yes. Okay, so you would be able to tell, you'd be able to see kind of on the outskirts a lot of thick spider webs. All right, Silver, you can lead now. <laughs> what, are you too scared to go into the pit first? Maybe. Okay. What's it to you? Well, just making sure. Um, is there anywhere I can uh, use a, a python to fasten a rope? to go down this pit oh yeah you could you could even tie there's some roots that are near the pit you could tie a rope okay. around that you think are sturdy enough or you could hammer a python into the large tree that kind of smashed this pit open and you could tie a rope there and easily be able to use it to I'll, yeah, I'll just tie a rope around the around the roots okay so silver secures a rope and the... and then before he climbs down i will climb down okay so you're gonna climb down first Yes. Okay, so Frank... Can the rope hold the turtle? <laughs> What's that? We'll find out! Can the rope hold the turtle? Uh, you can hear the rope stretching. <laughs> and you hear those terrible sounds of the rope. That at any moment it could snap. But eventually, after 20 feet of descending, uh, Franklin, you hit the bottom. And you're just kind of in this circular area of light that's shining down from the pit and the rest seems to be in darkness but you can catch the glimpse and the gl glimmer of these spider webs that seem to drift off into the darkness i don't do, do turtles have dark vision no i have low light you have low light okay so you'd be able to catch some of the outskirts around this room um it just it looks like a some type of ancient possibly buried structure it's... I will light a torch so I can see better. Okay. Is anybody? And I will climb down also. Okay. After him. All right, Silver, you make your way down the rope. Everybody else following along. Yep. Did you guys tell the frogs to wait upstairs or or wait up on the the ground or were you bringing them down with you? Probably be a good idea to tell them to wait. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to get them killed. <laughs> All right, so the uh, the frogs are waiting, kind of keeping guard up at the top of the pit, holding their spears nervously as they watch. Um, they feel a little bit better once Franklin disappears from their immediate range. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And you guys all approach uh, the bottom of the floor as you finally slide down. Franklin is using his torch to kind of scan the room. Um, as soon as I see that he has a torch, I'm going to reach into my bag and pull out a hooded lantern and just have him light it and say, let's use this so we don't draw as much attention. I'll light her lantern and I'll snuff out my torch, but I'm wondering if there's some kind of knowledge check I can make to see how long these webs have been here, if they're abandoned or still in... Uh, make a nature check. I got an 18. 18. Uh, as you inspect the webs, you have the very distinct feeling that these are still somewhat fresh. And they are still you being used. And you notice that when you're inspecting a web, that one of them starts to move. Um... We might have company coming toward us. And as Franklin says that, you both look up, and there are these two enormous spiders on the opposite ends of these webs in the top corners of the room, and they're starting to climb down slowly of the webs, but the webs were making so much motion that they gave off their position. I need everybody to go ahead and roll initiative for me. <laughs> I hate spiders so much. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? I should wild shape into a giant spider. <laughs> <laughs> Nat 20 on initiative. Nat 20 on... <laughs> Alrighty. Let me roll some initiative here. Alright. Did anybody roll... Well, we know that Vic's got a 20. Is that, is that your initiative, or is it... 23. 23. Anybody roll higher than a 23? Okay. 23 for Vix. Anybody roll a uh, 15 or higher? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> how, about, how about a 10 or higher? 11. 11. With two 11s and a 10? Your dex is yep. better than mine, so you get to go before me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my dex is plus three. so we've got Raz and Franklin. Minus one. Yep. You guys always beat my. Well. And you had a 10, was that right, yeah. sir? Okay. Yep. Alright, and we are set to go. Vix, you actually get the jump on these spiders, so you can go ahead and take your turn. What would you like to I do? I just look up. Ah, it's got so many eyes! <laughs> Viciously mock it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it, it fails. Oh, <laughs> That's one point of damage. One point of damage. <laughs> and then I am scurrying up the rope. Okay. <laughs> How many fighters, fighters are we facing? There are two. One on, they're kind of one on one side of the room and one kind of behind you on the opposite side, but you, you're able to see both of them because they both rolled terrible in their stealth checks. <laughs> Fair enough. So that one also with Vicious Mockery has disadvantage on attack rolls, is that right? Yes. Okay. I think it's the first one. The first attack? Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Excellent. And you're starting to scurry back up the rope? Okay. Yes, yes. So you... And it is definitely the first one. You're, Vix is like... <laughs> Starting to climb back up the rope. Uh, you almost get to the top of the rope at the end of this turn. <sighs> and uh, <laughs> that brings us to Raz. Um, so I would have, like, as soon as I noticed there was movement, I would have set the lantern on the ground. Okay. Just so that it would sort of, like, illuminate the area, but not me. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so how, how wide is... Like, how far away are these spiders from here? I would say they're about 30 feet away from you. Okay. And they're up about 20 feet. They're starting to climb down towards you. Okay. Then I'm going to pull out my short bow. All right. And my trusty, trusty short bow. Trusty short um, bow. And I'm going to roll for the one that uh, Vix mocked. 
Okay, yeah, that would be the one closest to you, because Vix, you and Vix were in the back, and I would say Silver and Franklin were more towards the front spider. And that is an 18. 18 will hit. Go ahead and... What's the damage for that? As you, uh, that's going to be 6 damage. 6 damage as you draw an arrow back and sink it right into the front of its abdomen area. Nicely done. It kind of squeals a little bit, but it's still crawling down towards you. Actually, it looks like it's more angry at you now and is looking with all eight eyes directed in your <laughs> your direction. Um, um, can I then take a bonus action to hide? Is there anything to hide behind? or? Uh, there is a lot of things to hide behind. There looks like a broken altar about ten foot away from you. Um, there Perfect. looks like piles of rubble all around. There even looks like an old <laughs> a large maybe humanoid size corpse that's wrapped up in webbing yeah i'll skip that one and i'll just go for the altar. <laughs> okay gotcha. <laughs> you can make a stealth <laughs> check to hide uh, that's a bonus action i can hide yes mm -hmm. uh, so, okay that, that was your added. that was your level two uh feature yep, yep. awesome yep so do I still make a stealth check for that? Or? Yeah, you have to make a stealth check to see if you, it beats their passive perception score. Okay, that is a 15. 15, all right. You are pretty well hidden. <laughs> all right. So, I was just out of brownie. Nice. <laughs> Franklin, <laughs> you're up. I have one question. Yes. What kind of action would it be to light the webs on fire? <laughs> um, I would allow you to do it. It would take probably your 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 whole action to do so. But yes, you could. I'm willing to spend my whole turn lighting the webs on fire. Excellent. That shit, that <laughs> stuff will spread like crazy. It will. It will. So you guys watch as Franklin. Uh, reignites his torch and just slams it into the webbing in front of him and the the fire starts to spread super quickly um like, like the videos i've seen on facebook of a dry christmas tree <laughs> it starts to go <laughs> as this fire starts to consume and light up the entire area it almost seems to throw this first spider off a little bit as it's not quite to it just yet would you like to move franklin no, they could come at me. Okay. I'm not scared. All right. <laughs> you know, by by lighting those webs on fire in front of you, that spider is going to have to climb through fire to get to you. Um, That's okay. I'm okay with this. All right. <laughs> so that brings us to that very spider. Um, spiders don't like fire. Uh, I would assume that this spider is going to turn around and it's going to start trying to climb back up the web. Unfortunately, it's cornered itself into the corner of the room. Um, it looks around. It's panicking. It's going to take a web attack shot at Franklin with disadvantage because it's freaking out. <laughs> so some webbing comes flying at Franklin and Franklin, it actually sticks to your torch and it just burns up, igniting your torch even more than it was originally. <laughs> yeah, and you hold it up <laughs> nice and high, illuminating the room. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Silver, you're up. Uh, I'm going to bring out my crystal and uh, cast Eldritch Blast at the one they've already attacked. Okay. Uh, and it was a 16 to hit. That will hit. And then seven points of force damage. Seven points of force damage as this Eldritch Blast um, just drives into the front of the spider. Um, he's looking pretty shabby, this one that's been beat down so far. And it becomes that one's turn. Uh, the fire has not kind of made its way completely around the room to block this one's path to you guys. Um, it does not see Raz. Uh, it sees Vix trying to climb out of the area. It also sees um, <laughs> Silver down below. So it is going to use its entire movement to get right down in front of Silver. And it's going to make a bite attack as it tries to latch on to you, Silver. Okay. Uh, let me check. I think that one will hit you. An 18? Yes, okay. that is. So you take 
You're going to take seven points of piercing damage. Okay. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw for me. Was that with disadvantage? Oh, that was not with disadvantage. You're right. Let me let me roll that again. Uh, that's a 16. Yeah, it still hits. Still me. hits you. Oh, oh. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that was a good point. Thanks for reminding me on that one. The con save is an 18. 18. Yes, you are successful. So you do feel uh, as as you look at this spider taking its um, fangs out from your flesh, you can see that there's like this little green, yellowish substance that didn't quite make it into your bloodstream as it bit down on you. Uh, I would like to use my reaction to cast Hellish Rebuke on it. Oh, cool. <laughs> what is, does it have to make a save? Uh, I think so, yeah. It's a, I think it's a dex save. A dex? Okay. Natural one. <laughs> uh, he takes eight points of fire damage from the spell wow what does that look like when you do it uh, a red energy emanates from my crystal as I cast the spell and just kind of erupts in flames from, from me all right. So the spider thought it was getting away from the flames consuming the room <laughs> and now is just engulfed in Silver's <laughs> hellish rebuke flames <laughs> as it screeches and reels back. It's not looking very good, Silver. Um and it stays put. Vix, you're at the top, you can still see into the room, but you also get a glimpse of the two frog-like creatures that are standing about 5 foot ab above you. Its legs are so hairy! <laughs> I, I, I viciously mock it again. Viciously mock it again? <laughs> the same one that you viciously mocked before? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it fails again. Two points of psychic damage! <laughs> this thing, uh, just reeling in pain right now, um, looks terrible. It looks... its flesh is burnt, most of the hair is gone from this spider. It looks awful. Uh, but it is still up. I'm just gonna like climb down so I'm in the middle of the rope. Okay. You're about that's ten it. feet up off the floor in the middle of the rope. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Got you. <laughs> Raz, that brings us to you. I am going to sort of poke up from behind the altar with my short bow again and um, aim at the one that Franklin has cornered with fire. Okay, perfect. Um, and take a shot off at that one. Okay. I'm going to give you advantage on this roll because of the fire oh. and consuming it, and it's basically cornered into the top of the room because of what Franklin did. That's a 17 to hit? That will hit. Roll your damage and your sneak attack. I was going to say, and I should get sneak attack. Yeah. <laughs> that is six. Nine damage. Nine damage. Nice. As and then I'm going to hide again. <laughs> okay, roll your uh, roll your self check as you sink another arrow into one of the eyes of this spider. You hear it screeching as it makes its contact. What'd you roll? That is thirteen. Thirteen. You s not as you don't s feel like you've hit it quite as well as last time, but you're pretty well hidden. Um, and that brings us to Franklin. So there's more webs that I could light on fire, right? There are, but you can tell by by the sp beginning of the spider's next turn, you think they're going to be completely wrapped around the room. You think this this these flames are almost to this one trapped in the corner. I mean, it it, it ignited and it's just climbing the walls, going everywhere. Imagine yourself in a room that is completely on fire, all almost on all walls. That's that's okay. how it's starting and to feel in here. <laughs> the spider that attacks Silver, how hurt is it? It looks terrible. It looks like... It almost looks like you could flick it. <laughs> okay, then I am going to cast Cure Wounds on Silver. Okay. Sweet. I thought you were going to say the spider. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you can heal 12 points of damage. Oh. <laughs> Alright, I think that takes Silver back up the full. Yeah, it does. All right, so your wounds have completely healed over, Silver, as you hear the incantations from your turtle friend, Franklin. 
And, uh, Franklin, are you going to move or are you going to stay put? I had to move in order to touch him. Oh, yeah, yeah, so you move towards him, put a hand on his back, and he feels much better now. That brings us to uh, the spider that was in the corner, and he actually gets consumed by flames this turn. So go ahead and roll a 2d6 for me. That'll be... 10 points of damage. Wow, you rolled really well on that one. So you hear the screeching, and it starts to basically, as it's burning and on fire, it starts to run down the wall um, towards you guys. Because you moved out of out of the way, you moved just out of its range, so it can't quite get to you. It's going to use its action to kind of scuttle up behind you, Franklin, as you have your hand on Silver. Silver, it's your go. Uh, I'm just going to take out my shimitar and I'm going to attack the spider that's in front of me. All right. Uh, that is going to be a 21 to hit. That will hit, definitely. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, six points of slashing damage. All right. As you slash across the face, you watch as the spider just turns over upside down and lands on the ground in front of you and its legs curl up really tight against its body <laughs> as the flames wrap around the room and ignite it onto fire and it is now a burning wad of spider in front of you jesus <laughs> <laughs> it is gone and that brings us well that spider's off the initiative order so vix you're you're back up I, I weigh my whole situation. I just look down at the spider and uh, I, I, I say, Looks like you're toast! <laughs> <laughs> I viciously mock it. Oh, uh, this time, uh, this time it succeeds with a natural twenty. It doesn't like my puns. <laughs> it does oh, not okay. like your puns. No. <laughs> This spider is looking vicious. It's got flames like wrapping all around it now. Its fur is completely ignited. You can hear it like bubbly. Its flesh bubbling as it's right beside you, Franklin. And Raz, it's your turn as you're hiding back there. I am going to do the exact same thing and jump up, short bow. That's a natural one. Oh. <laughs> I missed. You you came close, but you realized the the fire it being on fire it helped it made you misjudge the size of this creature, and it just goes through the flames, and you see a flaming arrow go across the uh, opposite side of the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to hide again. Hide again. Okay, make your stealth check. That's a. 24. Oh, yeah. I don't think anybody can see you. Even in a well-lit room could, that's on fire. <laughs> if I rolled a 20. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Franklin, you are up. So with my super torch, I'm going to hit uh, the spider with it. <laughs> super torch, yes. Go ahead. Uh, this would You wouldn't add your proficiency bonus with this, though, because it's an improvised weapon. Okay, that is still a 15 to hit then. You hit. Go ahead and I guess <laughs> I guess we'll call this a club with a D6, so a D6. fire with a D6 fire damage. Okay, that is uh 5 fire damage, 2 bludgeoning damage, and then uh 3 more from strength. So 10 <laughs> nice. Go ahead and describe this for us as you take down the spider. <laughs> I like take the torch and shove it into its mouth, <laughs> and then I'm just like, "Oh, that was a bad idea," and I let go. You let you let go of the torch. Yep. All right, you let go of the torch. It's got the end, the handle sticking out as you watch flames just consume its entire face, and it does much like the other spider did. It lands on the ground. It starts to twitch, and its legs curl in on itself as it's just roasting. And you guys smell the aroma of cooked spider and burnt webbing all throughout the place. Uh, <laughs> you guys are in out of initiative order as both of these spiders are down. But it smells so bad in this room right now. And this the webbing is 
kind of burnt up to the top of the room now because it went in a flash. Like it happened so quick. Um, the only parts that are still on fire are the spiders are burning a little bit. And these what look to be cocoons that must have been past meals of the spider all around the room. Some of them are still caught up in a little bit of flame. I'm going to stand up from <laughs> behind where I was hidden. <laughs> and are we in a passageway or a room? Um, it's 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 a probably about a fifty foot square room. It seems way out? it seems like there would be a way out to the north, but it's been it caved in a long what appears to be a long time ago because there's some moss and some roots and things like growing amongst the stones uh, but then you start to hear the voices again and the voices are almost originating from one of the cocoon like bulbs that originally Raz was looking to hide behind I was never looking to hide behind <laughs> <laughs> those were immediately discounted yeah. Mark those off the list. No. <laughs> so Raz's arrow, would you say it's broken? Yes. It's hit in the wall. It's I cast mending. Okay. <laughs> Can I give it back? Does <laughs> does mending fix like burning? Like does it is it still charred or is it just like it, to repair? It fixes it. It fixes it. It fixes small problems. Okay. And burning on an arrow is still a small problem. Okay, so yeah, he's able to fix. He, Franklin fixes your arrow and hands it back to you. Thank you. I, That's... I will make my way over to the. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll climb down and go over to it too because I want it to and stop. Then I will follow Silver. Okay, you guys approach I... this uh, cocoon like wrapping of webbing. That's still kind of burning in some areas because it's the whole room went up whenever Franklin did this really because it was this room. There was a lot of the corners were consumed by web. So you guys can see that in this cocoon looks like some type of skeleton. But you can only see pieces. You might have to rip some of the burnt cocoon and things off or look kind of closer. Yeah, I'll take a dagger and like start uh, cutting the webs that are there, okay. so I can get a better look. And as you're doing can that, tell... as you're doing that, you're hearing, "Find." Okay. Can I tell if there's any difference between this cocoon and the other ones, like the bodies inside of them? Uh, yeah. Go ahead and make a medicine check as you're kind of roaming around the room and checking them out. Um. Uh. That is a 19. 19. As you're watching Silver open up this cocoon and you're taking a look at the skeleton within, it looks humanoid in nature, but the skull represents dragonborn. And as you open this up, you open up and you reveal what would be the chest cavity area this rib cage and on the rib cage you notice that there is this amulet hanging from around the skeleton's neck and as you reveal it franklin vix and silver you all hear these draconic voices super loud in your mind repeating those same things it's been saying to you all this time you hear r loud and clear, Franklin, discover, and then you hear find silver, and then to you, Vix, hero. I don't I'm going to go up and investigate the necklace thing. Yeah, I was just going to grab it. Okay, you're just going to grab it and pull it off. Um, yeah. Immediately when you grab it, the voices stop. Thank you. Thank you so much. I oh my God. <laughs> and 
when you look closer, it appears to have a symbol on top of it that looks like a very stylized dragon carved from could be could it could actually be silver for what you can tell and as it comes down it looks like the tail is wrapping around what looks to be a small black gem in it but it looks like part of it goes down further but it's broken off like as if it's missing a piece i'm gonna start looking around the body see if there's a broken piece anywhere Okay, make an investigation check. Uh, Raz, as you're going through the other bodies and just kind of looking around um, with your medicine check, it looks like one of them was a humanoid of some, a human probably, mm -hmm. based on the skeleton. And there, it looks like there was four individuals that came down here. By your medicine check, you can tell they all probably died by the hands of these spiders all around the same time. And... When you're inspecting the one human, you actually discover that one of them had a book. And it looks to be, although you're having trouble reading some of the incantations, but it looks to be what you would think would be a spell book. Okay. 14 for investigation. 14. Uh, you're looking around. You don't see any more pieces, but as you closely, more, more closely inspect this amulet... It looks like there's some wear where the break was, so it must it might have been broken for quite a while. Like it, it, you don't think it was something that happened recently? Okay. And I don't recognize anything about this uh, amulet at all. You don't really recognize anything uh, that you would know from past experiences or anything like that. No. I just has anybody seen anything like this before? Is there a knowledge check we can make? Um, you can make a history check. It's going to be really difficult. Because this is something I'm that... curled up in a ball on the ground, just holding my head. Just like, <laughs> crying, I'm so happy. So I doubt a 12 will get it then. No, a 12's not. You, you, you haven't really seen this. It looks stylized. It's almost a logo of some sort. Uh, but you're not really sure what it means. I would have stuck the book into my bag and then gone over to take a look at the amulet. Okay. Is it at all familiar to me? Um, you can go ahead and also make a history check if you'd like. That's a three. A three? <laughs> well, I got nothing. Yeah, you're... <laughs> history is not my strong point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you're not really sure either. It doesn't remind you of any things that you've seen uh, in any of your experiences. I guess I'm just going to put it in my bag for now. And Okay. Um, Raz, as you're kind of looking through, you do also find 15 gold pieces, 20, okay. 20, um, 28 silver pieces, and about 110 copper pieces. Okay, so you said 15, 28, and 110? Yep. Okay. I will also pocket those in various pouches uh it looks as if there is a metal shield and a long sword that was left behind by the uh dragonborn quick question is she trying to hide the fact that she found this or is she just putting it in her bag i don't know that's a good I'm question i mean you guys are focused on that stuff the book i think <laughs> i might have sort of tried to hide Okay. The money, I'm just sort of like palming it as I find it. Okay. Yeah, you you can you guys can probably see that she's collecting coinage that has been um probably in different dry rotted pouches that have seemed to open up after these flames have ripped through the place. Is this shield like a, a decent looking shield? Uh, it seems like it's got some you know, dinks and you you know this looks like it has some damage, but I mean, it's not bad. No, it doesn't. I cast Mending. All right. <laughs> It'll take a couple times to... you Basically, Mending on little each little uh, 
the spot, take a couple minutes to mend it up. But yeah, it looks like it would be okay. I'd pick up the shield also. Okay. Just because it was with the body. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That poor sword. It's going to be all alone. You just took its whole family away. There also is, uh, next to one of the other bodies, what looks to be a broken loot. No, it's not. I, I cast Mending. <laughs> I scurry over and I grab it. Uh, <laughs> mending can fix the loot, but it doesn't keep it, and doesn't make it, uh, it doesn't tune it. <laughs> Well, I wasn't hoping to do it. I was just trying to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yep. Um, Good thing I don't know how to use a loop. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So you guys have kind of... It, it seems like this room is just... It's... It's been a while since this room has been able to be accessed from wherever this tunnel leads, but... Recently, it looks like, because of the hole that opened up. Um, Can I tell anything about the altar? Like, is it? Is there anything special about it, or is it just sort of a... Um, it, it kind of reminds you of the altar that you guys saw when you went down in Franklin's little hermit village. Mm. It's very similar to that kind of altar. It's very simple in nature. And but this one is not dressed up like it was when you guys were with Franklin. This one is just until recently, I think, has been it's been covered up for quite some time. What about like the symbols and stuff on the altar? Is it readable or not? Not really. It seems like it's so weathered that none of the none of the engravings that would be in an altar seem to be. It just looks like a simple stone slab almost. It's been can I look for secret so, doors? So you're saying I can fix it with <laughs> mending? Not this one. <laughs> you can look for a secret door if you'd like to make an investigation check. Nine. Nine. You're feeling along the walls, nothing but dirt and um, little centipedes crawl out from the cracks between the grout of the stone and just kind of move along. Nothing seems to be moving or opening. I look around, and then I pick one off the wall and eat it. Alright. It's pretty crunchy. But satisfying. <laughs> I would walk over to Silver and so have the voices stop. Uh, <clears throat> as of right now, I think they have. I think it wanted uh wanted us to find this amulet for some reason. Has it given you any indication of what you're supposed to do with it? Uh, not yet. I mean, I'll. I guess I'll let you all know if it ever tells me what to do. I guess. I'm not really sure. I do have a question. Are the spiders done cooking? <laughs> by about this time are you guys looking around searching picking up things yeah I would say probably I'll distribute food around to everybody okay Franklin starts to hack up spider meat how much meat is I'll on a it. spider <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start eating it all right. I make sure not to get any of the poison sacks in any of my cuts. <laughs> okay. Fugu <laughs> style, you know. He's been chopping this thing up, yeah. Um, it's 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 a little dry, uh, overcooked, but it, it, you know, not the best tasting meat in the world. Good char I, I, never I heard anything. I don't know what is spider. It better than I, I can't. I can't describe um, it because I've I never tasted spider before. Spider is supposed <laughs> to taste like lobster. That's only what I've heard. I've never had spider, but it's supposed to be like lobster. Imagine kind of like a rubbery, <laughs> overcooked ro lobster meat. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think that texture is very good <laughs> to, to describe. No. <laughs> Oh, but uh, Franklin doesn't care. Uh, Silver doesn't either. <laughs> I'm like, I have a whole leg. 
I'm just like, ah, <laughs> 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 an entire spider leg. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm gonna <laughs> pass on the whole spider thing. <laughs> All right. I'm interested. I guess I'll climb back out if I feel like this room is thoroughly looked over. Oh yeah, yeah. You uh, so. kind of look over, and it doesn't seem like there's really anything else after you guys inspected most of everything for this room. And Silver makes his way back up the ropes and. Right as you get up to the top, one of the frog-like creatures extends his hand to uh, help you up. Take it. All right. He, you kind of pull him down a little bit, and, he, yeah. <laughs> and then the other frog comes over and helps to pull you up. <laughs> Once I'm up there, I just kind of motion them back, so I start helping people up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they just look at each other and go... <laughs> They just kind of stand there, kind of guarding as you guys are all... I'm assuming all of you are headed back up to the top. And yep, I, and we're going to head yep. back to the, to the frog village now. Yep. Like, yep. there again. All right. I'll, I'll go up the rope last. Sure. I'll, I'll look around for candles before I leave. Um, no candles here. All sorry right. to say. I'll climb the rope. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll make sure to pick up my rope before leaving. All right. Yep, you uh, roll up your rope and attach it back to your explorer's pack that you've got. And you guys uh, gesture to the frogs to carry on and lead the way back to your initial trail, which they do uh, rather stealthily. And they start to move back towards the west, and you guys are following along. Are you guys, um, as they, well, here's what we'll do. As you get to a spot, the frogs kind of look at each other and you hear them start to make some quiet communication towards each other with these little croaks of their uh, natural language as they start to <laughs> And then they look back towards you guys and they both gesture with their hands with a one finger over their mouth like this. And then they point straight ahead And then they kind of start to move really stealthily from this point on. Well, I will try to stealth with my terrible dexterity. <laughs> Same. Okay, so you guys can all roll stealth checks. We'll make this a group stealth check, including the frog creatures. Um, I shit you. i not, not joking. <laughs> I got a zero. You got a zero. I got a zero. I got a net 20. A plus. net 20. That's a Five. success. 19 for me. Okay. 12. 12? Um, let me see. Something very quickly. Da, da, da. <laughs> I failed too. Okay. Um, what did you say you rolled, Silver? 19. 19. And you had a natural 20, Raz? Yeah, so 25. Okay, so... I think the only person who failed was Franklin. So you guys all succeed on your group check. Um, you guys are able to kind of hide the fact that Franklin is making a little bit of noise as he's approaching. <laughs> a little bit? I rolled a natural one. <laughs> so under his steps, I just like, I cast Mage Hand to try to catch his feet. You're, just light, a little you're bit. lightening up his <laughs> steps a little bit. That's perfect. I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome <laughs> i love it guys you guys are making your way and all of a sudden you start to see a clearing ahead it's almost like the foliage started to get a little bit thicker and now it's lightening up and you can see this area of openness ahead of you and the frog-like creatures look back at you and they they do this they make these hand motions and they point at each other and then they go like this. They put two hands close together and they bring them apart like this. Right, 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 right. So they're separate. <laughs> yeah. So they go one way, we go another. I'm assuming that's what they mean. Well, as they... As they, yeah, as they keep moving and as they get closer, you guys start to see uh, more into the clearing. Beyond the clearing, it looks like the opening of a cave mouth. But only about 15 feet in front of the cave mouth, it, there's this random large tree. 
that grows out of the ground and just sticks out in this clearing. But these frog creatures are really adamant about being really quiet. I'll follow the frog creatures. Okay. As you get... I'm gonna... Oh yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna cast Disguise Self to look as a three foot five frog person. Excellent. You're you're only a little bit shorter than them, to be honest. You're probably only about oh, a okay. half a foot shorter than them. They're not as tall as like a normal uh, humanoid creature. They're probably probably the tallest ones are probably four and a half feet. Okay. Uh. Well, I'll just like try to match their level then. I can only mm-hmm. go a foot taller than I am, and I'm. Oh, yeah. Two feet and a half. Oh, absolutely. You could easily do that with your disguise self. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now all of a sudden there are three frog creatures (laughs) and no Vix. Ribbit! Ribbit! (laughs) One of them looks back at you and is like, (laughs) looks back at the other one and is like, Right now. I am so gonna clip this when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as you get closer to the clearing, the trail seems to open up into that uh, clearing, and one frog creature starts to creep around the edge of the clearing to the left, and the other one seems like he's going to the right. It just seems like they're holding on to the edge as sneaky as they possibly can. I will follow whatever one everybody else is following. So I'm probably following Franklin, I'm assuming, since he's the one always behind I'm going to follow whichever one is closer to me at the time they split. Okay, <laughs> so you're going right then, Franklin. We'll say you're going right. Uh, Silver, you're also going right. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go left. You're gonna go left. I'm gonna go left as All well. Right, so hey. <laughs> two frog creatures <laughs> and a chef are going left. <laughs> Prep chef. And you guys are wrapping around. Um and you start to get to the edge of where the cave mouth is. And you creep along the edge of the rock and you watch these frog creatures are staring right at this tree. And they're just One has his back right up against the wall where the cave mouth is, uh, about 15 feet more to his left. This is on your side, Raz and Vix. He's just sliding his back across the wall. And as you get a closer look at the wall next to where this cave mouth is, you can see that a lot of these creatures must do this a lot because it's almost rubbed clean from where they were kind of moving around this tree. Can I see if there's anything, like, remarkable about the tree? Or if it's just a tree? Uh, Make a nature check. That's exactly what I was going to do. You can make a nature check as well. Because you're on the other side, so you guys wouldn't be able to help one another. You'd be making your individual checks as you... I got 16. Okay. I got a 17. 16 and 17. It looks like a regular tree. I really want to touch it. Should I touch it? I, I reach up. I reach. The up frog and, reaches pull. up and tries to grab your hand. I I, I was gonna pull on Raz's shirt. Oh, oh, you're pulling on Raz's shirt. Okay. Should I touch it? I want to touch it. I really want to touch it. I want to know what's wrong with it. Maybe when we come out, we can. Uh, once we once we've seen what they're trying to tell us, then then we can come back and maybe you can even climb it. I don't know. <gasps> okay. Let's, right. let's wait until wait until you guys both feel a tug and the frog creature is staring at you he goes I go back <laughs> <laughs> um make a perception check Franklin silver since you're on that side you can make one as well 21 21 nice nope that's like a seven. Franklin, you notice uh, behind the clearing, now that you're on the other side, kind of sliding across the front of this, where this cave face is, coming the trail that you guys just came, it looks like that little frog you were talking to. 
is hopping down the trail towards you. And there are... Hey, thanks for the bits. Appreciate it. <laughs> for frog speak. <laughs> um, these frogs. And there's like four of them following little Jibby. They're just hopping and they stop. You hear them chirp a little bit. And then they hop a little bit more. And they stop. It's still on the other side of the clearing, but you noticed it. Silver doesn't notice it. He didn't. He's worried about this tree. I'm gonna wild shape into a frog, okay. so I could speak with them a lot easier. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Silver, Franklin is not next to you anymore, and there is a small frog at your feet. Ribbit. <laughs> hold, hold on. I, I just go to poke it. That's amazing. <laughs> what are the frogs saying? Um, you hear uh, Jibby uh, overhear him speaking to his friends. That's that's the one. He has good swamp lettuce. <laughs> 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 oh, oh my god! <laughs> Franklin has groupies. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> so, the frog guy. I'm gonna croak and say, "Why are we afraid of that tree?" Oh, you're gonna croak at it? Yes. Okay. As you make those noises. You see the limbs of the tree start to move. And it starts to shift and turn. And its branches start to go wild and crazy. And that's where we'll end tonight's episode. As we get ready. Oh boy. For so next wait, time. Oh boy, and now we have the Whomping Willow. I'm <laughs> <the Whomping Willow. laughs> have trevor <laughs> and aragog dang we're just getting <laughs> sweet that was such an awesome time guys that was fun uh guys online yeah, watching us on twitch thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight once again my name is michael the dungeon master for dash or delvin dash right here on proficiency bonus uh what an exciting episode that was so uh, remember, uh, Delvin Dash, these episodes are only about an hour to an hour and 10 minutes long. So it's easy for you guys to go head back up and catch up. You can catch up on YouTube at our Proficiency Bonus YouTube channel. Um, you can also catch most of these guys and some of our other. Uh, we've got um, Insight Check on Saturday nights with uh, hey. Derek and Jamie. So you can catch us, uh, catch them on Saturday nights as well. So Thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out with us tonight. Was there any other announcements that I needed to make before we call it a night tonight, guys? I always forget something. I mean, not that I can think of. All right. I can think of. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, uh, also, uh, Ani, thanks, thanks again for doing all the awesome intro videos that you were cool. doing with, uh, with coming from Raz's perspective. I think that is so neat. Um, so if you guys aren't catching the beginnings of these episodes, make sure you do. Uh, uh, Ani does an awesome uh, intro video uh, basically to summarize the last episode for us. So that way we're not actually taking stream time or anything away from the, the game time. And it gives us that feedback, you know, that, that, that intro into what we need to do for this next session. So we're going to go ahead and uh, call it a night. And once again, make sure that you guys hang out with us next week as... This tree seems to be going nuts on our party. As I'm glad I didn't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure, uh, in the meantime, don't forget to add your proficiency bonus. Remember, Mystic Hour is tonight. Uh, should be starting within probably about 20 minutes. So make sure you hang out with us there. We'll be uh, checking out um, some d interesting theme of crossovers in D&D &D tonight. So it's going to be an interesting episode. Make sure you guys tune in. Until then, don't forget to add your proficiency bonus, and we'll see you guys next time. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>